I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com Reviews, and this is the Wio Terminal, an Arduino compatible development board that's absolutely packed full of sensors, communication devices, a screen, and for an entirely reasonable $30. This is why I'm never touching an Arduino again. So the Wio Terminal is the latest in a long line of Wio branded devices from Seed Studio. The first being the Wio Link that launched around four years ago. Now, unlike some random development boards out there, it is very well documented and comes with specific libraries for all of the features. They're very easy to use so you can get up and go right away with example codes for everything. And believe me, there is a lot inside here, so I want to give you a quick info dump first. The Wio terminal is based on a Cortex M4F, which is a 32-bit ARM processor running at 120 or burst mode 200 megahertz. There's four megabytes of flash memory, 192K of RAM, and it has a Realtek RTL8720DN wireless chip providing Wi-Fi BGNAC and Bluetooth 4 or 5 built in. Other nifty onboard features include a microphone, buzzer, IR emitter, light sensor, five-way mini joystick, three push buttons, an accelerometer, 2.4 inch LCD screen, and two Grove connectors for additional sensors from the Grove branded line. There's also a micro SD card port for storage, a USB-C port with the ability to function either as a USB host device, meaning you can plug in, say, a USB game controller to this, or alternatively, it can be a USB client. So this device could emulate a keyboard, mouse, or MIDI device when you plug it into your PC. It's all packaged up very neatly in this 72 by 57 by 12 millimeter case, and I am absolutely blown away by how much they've managed to cram in here. It does kind of feel like you're throwing the entire kitchen sink at a project you make, but then when the kitchen sink only costs $30, I mean, why shouldn't you? So in addition to being Arduino compatible, meaning that you would program it through the Arduino interface uh, in C style code, it is also compatible with something called MicroPython uh, in the form of ArduPy package. Now this appears to be less well developed than the Arduino side of things. And to be honest, I really hate Python code with a passion. So I didn't touch uh, that side of it for the testing. But if you want to find out more about programming it in uh, Arduino, Micro, Python, whatever it is, uh, then check out that link down in the comments where you can find more about that. In addition, around the back you'll find a 40-pin Raspberry Pi uh, connector, a hat connector, so you can stick this on top of a Raspberry Pi and use it as a Raspberry Pi hat if you wanted to. Though, to be honest, I think given how powerful this is, that would be a bit of a waste. It is, however, there if you want that, if you want the sort of Grove connectors or the joystick or those kind of sensors to be used in a Raspberry Pi project instead, you could do that. So to get started, you'll need the Arduino uh, development environment and a third-party board manager set in your Arduino preferences. From there, you can go ahead to the board manager and add support for the Wio terminal. Upon first powering on the Wio terminal, you'll be greeted by a little flappy bird-like retro game you can play around with if you want, or just launch straight into some of the example codes provided on the wiki, which is what I did. Now, I must admit, I had a compilation error the very first bit of code that I tried, which was a little bit disheartening. Getting onto support, I had that fixed straight away, though. I just had to downgrade to an earlier version of the library. It turned out they had pushed a sort of development version of it, at the time of testing, this is very uh, early release stage stuff, so it's often expected that things will break. However, that was easily fixed, and I was quickly up and running with some code. So within minutes, I was running this thing which would read the accelerometer values. Uh, again, built into this is the accelerometer, and it then plotted those onto a graph which was displayed on the built-in screen. And then modifying that code with something that would save to the SD card would also be absolutely trivial if that was something you needed to do. Again, there's examples for that on the wiki. So once I had that up and running, I adjusted it to use the values from the light sensor instead. Very simple. And at that point, I wanted to hook it up to a sensor that wasn't um, built into the Wio terminal. And that's when I realized one of the small limitations to a device like this. On an Arduino Uno, for instance, you have, say, 15 or so digital and analog pins that you can access and easily add your own sensors on 
uh, sort of bare bones to the board. With this, you do have that, but they're a bit hidden away. Again, there's some GPIO pins on the back in the uh, Raspberry Pi compatible 40 pin connector. You could use those. They are labeled on the documentation, just not on this board itself. And there's also the two Grove connectors, which you can either read the pinouts for and then connect a couple of analog sensors to there. You can use any of the Grove sensors and actuators that are in that Grove ecosystem. From looking at it, I don't own any already, but from looking online, the prices seem entirely reasonable, actually. They are a little bit more expensive than just the bare sensors, but not as much as I thought they would be. But of course, once you buy into the Grove system, you're sort of locked into it. And conversely, if you already own a lot of sensors and bits and bobs, then you will need to get some sort of breakout cable, which can then turn that Grove connector into some standard uh, digital or analog pins. Unfortunately, one of those cables wasn't included in the test package. There's really just this that you'll find in the package and a USB cable, so I wasn't able to connect that sensor. But you know what, that's okay. I think on a package like this, it's entirely reasonable to expect some sort of compromise when it comes to bare bones access to the board. So moving on to connectivity, the Wi-Fi aspect of it is a little bit more complicated to get up and running. Uh, you do need to reflash the firmware. It is, however, a one-time thing. Once you've enabled it, you won't need to do that again. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have done that at the factory. Perhaps they will on future models, but for now you will need to change the firmware over. And I expect the same will be true when Bluetooth eventually works too. At the moment, the Bluetooth uh, hardware is not supported. There's no examples for it and the firmware doesn't support it yet. They promise that is to come in the future and the board itself does have the hardware to do that. So enabling that will be uh, just a software upgrade. You won't have to actually change for a different model. Again though, I don't think that's a huge problem. I don't expect support for this to end anytime soon. As I said, it's part of a, a Wio branded line. There's lots of different models. This is just the latest one. And in fairness, Bluetooth is a pretty difficult thing to get implemented, but I have confidence that they will get that done eventually. In terms of other features you should know about, at the moment it does need to be powered over the USB-C cable. However, in future they expect to release a battery pack so you'll be able to put this as a remote sensor somewhere, making it perfect for those sort of data logging kind of applications. I think trying to find a suitable battery pack for your typical Arduino board is actually pretty difficult for anyone normally. Um, trying to get the right size and something safe and then get it enclosed. So it's good to know that there'll be something uh, ready-made accessory available for this. So should you buy a Wio terminal? Is it worth $30? Well, if you're just getting started in the world of Arduino and learning to code in that sort of C style language, or even if you're a pro looking to take on a new IoT or data logging project, then I think this is an absolutely perfect board to do it on. Given a choice between the Wio terminal that costs $30 and comes with a screen, Wi-Fi, a joystick, some buttons, a light sensor, an IR emitter, an SD card reader, a fast processor, lots of memory, or an official Arduino Uno that comes with literally nothing for $20, I know which one I'd choose. Now, of course, you can buy third-party Arduino clones that aren't nearly as expensive, and you can buy all the individual components for your project yourself, but then you have to start to look at how much you value your own time. One of the problems I've found with boards like that is that the support is just often not there. And even when you do have the support for your board and you're trying to match it up to some components, trying to figure out exactly which libraries to use and how to use them correctly is often a massive time suck and really takes away from the exciting part of the project, which is actually making something. With the Wio terminal, the screen is a core part of the hardware. It's built in and the libraries to use it are provided along with fantastic example codes on what you can do. And that for me is where the Wio terminal really wins out across uh, all of the Arduino compatible clones that you'll find out there. And again, for beginners, I think the Grove system really does have some value. Less so for pro users, but even then, you can still connect your existing sensors and buttons and what have you uh, with some breakout cables that are cheap.
The truth is, it has never been easier to get an IoT sensor project or data logging idea off of the ground with something like this. I think it's fair to say that the WIO terminal has single-handedly reinvigorated my interest in electronics programming projects. For a long time, I have been really, really frustrated with the sort of fragmented uh, architecture of Arduino and where it is at the moment. There's so many different boards out there, each with different features and capabilities and, oh, who knows anymore. Sometimes you just want to make cool stuff and anything that can help to break down those barriers and make the process easier is an absolute winner in my opinion. So definitely check out the WIO terminal, see if it's right for you, if it's got some of those built-in features that you think would be cool for your project. And at $30, I mean, you can't go wrong really, can you? Anyway, thanks to Seed Studio, we have another one of these little WIO terminals to give away to one lucky viewer. Just head on over to the link in the description to the main makeuseof.com website, or you can go straight to makeuseof.com slash giveaways. There you can enter your details and you'll be in with a chance of winning. Do be sure to answer the question, what would you make with your WIO terminal should you win? The competition closes in about three weeks from the date of this video and the winner will be contacted by email. So please add competitions at makeuseof.com to your address book. If you get an email from that address, the only time we will email you from that address is to say that you have won. So please put that in your address book and make sure that email doesn't go into spam or we'll have to pick another winner. Anyway, good luck. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if it's helped you in some way and consider subscribing to the channel. We do weekly reviews, giveaways, tech tutorials, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time.